I'm Robert Williams from MetalRules.com, and joining me tonight in Austin, Texas, is Norwegian black metal legend Abbott. How are you doing today, Abbott? Hunky fucking glory. So we're excited to have you back in Texas, and for the first time here in Austin. What do you enjoy most about touring here in the U.S.? The audience. Yeah, great audience we've had so far. Yeah, every night. I'm just blown away. Yeah. Season of Mist recently released your self-titled debut album this past January to, to rave reviews from both metal fans and the underground metal press alike. Let's talk about the new record. How long had you been working on this material? Were any of these songs originally intended for Immortal? Uh, yeah, some of it, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, when the, there was a fact that I wasn't going to move on with with those guys, you know, so, uh, you know, the music's still great and it needs to be out there, so, yeah. But I also have, uh, I have uh, material for, you know, at least two more albums standing by, you know. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been five years, uh, six or maybe a lot of years since the last Immortal album, so, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean I haven't been busy working on music. So when you say there's material for another two or three albums, um, how soon can we expect you to get back in the studio and record that kind of stuff? Uh, I said to, 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 to the record label, to Michael from the record label, I'm, I'm ready, but he, you know, he, he, wa he wanted to wait till, 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 uh, till uh, spring, I think. He said, yeah, spring, summer, around there next year, so, yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. So every, how, every day is. How's it been working with uh, Season of Mist after being with labels like Nuclear Blast and Osmos uh, for so long? It's been very good because uh, these, you know, these guys have been more more in in contact uh, personally with. So it's been a it's been a good uh, it's been a very good journey so far, you know. And they have been, you know, very. What do you call it? Uh, easy to work with, yeah. and, and you don't, they don't push it the, the wrong way, if you know what I mean. So this time around you had total artistic freedom writing all the music, all the lyrics. Uh, did you find that challenging or did you look forward to being able to have total control like that? Lyrics. The well, lyrics is, is a big challenge for me, you know, but uh, I have ideas, you know, and I have themes and, and I was, you know, very fortunate to, to work with uh, Simon Doncaster uh, this time, you know, from, uh, from uh, Boss on the Buddha and uh, he also participated on some of the lyrics for the Blizzard Beast album, actually, the Immortal album, Blizzard Beast, so, yeah, it's great. Long fucking lyrics, though and words that haven't been used in the English language since the Dark Ages. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. Yeah. And speaking so. of the Blizzard Beasts album, uh, you guys also did a cover of Nebula Raven Winter. Yeah. Um, why that song? What was the motivation to re-record that? Uh, just one of my favorite Immortal songs, really. Yeah. I love to play it. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just a song I'm looking forward to in the Saturday every night. So. Definitely one of my favorites. And I, I know um, you've expressed in... And I felt, you know, it, it, it deserved to be re-recorded since, you know, and also since we're going to play it live and, you know, more. Because back then, it was difficult for us, you know, to get, uh, to get things right. Uh, we didn't have a producer or anything. And, and uh, you know, also, also Mountains of Might, uh, we are thinking about, uh, you know, playing in a couple of days. Awesome. Yeah, just uh, we had so little time to, to practice uh, with the uh, with the uh, new guys. Uh, so so uh, so. Uh, but tomorrow we have a day off in El Paso, mm -hmm. and we're, I'm gonna sit down with them and and also in my kingdom cold, because I heard a couple of times uh, on this tour that people have been yelling for for it. So and it's a great live song, you know. Maybe Fenrir us to take a break, Fenrir Hunts, which is a great song, but it's, a, you know, it's difficult for the whole band to find, you know, find it comfortable to play, 
if the, if the sound is not perfect, right, you know, you know, just how it is. So the, the current set is comprised of all of your past bands, Immortal Eye? Yeah, yeah we, we, play, we play Warriors from uh, Between Two Rules, which is a great song, you know, love to play it live. So and we play Tyrants from Songs of in Darkness, one by one, you know. And what about I? Is I know that band's on on hold right now while while this current album is being promoted and everything. Any plans to do a, a follow up album with those guys? Uh, no. No. This is the total focus going forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know the the I album was uh, was came out very good, you know, good album. But it was just it, it was it was kind of a project, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it came out very good, but uh, and and uh, just something that happened, you know. Uh, I was having all this material, and Immortal was was on ice, you know, was on a break, and and uh, sat down with uh, Ice Dale from Enslaved, and he helped me out with his pre-productions, and and it just it just came something that just came out of that period. Uh, but uh, I don't see us doing that again. And that was the first time you worked with King, right? Yeah. He came in uh, very, you know, at the end of the process and, and just nailed the bass, you know. I went, I went to Oslo uh, for, for a week and uh, I don't remember what, but then when I came home, you know, he had already pulled on the bass for the album perfectly, you know. And uh, I hadn't even shown him what to play, you know. It's just same, same with this album, you know, he just showed him the riff and he, you know, just spot on, so, so, uh, well, it's good to see you guys working together again, he's got a real prominent role in the, in the new video, and, yeah, it's going, it's going real good, you know, it's going great so far, his yeah. girlfriend designed those cool masks, yeah, dig that, yeah, where did you guys originally meet, uh, me and, uh, me and King, yeah, uh, must have been a Garage or Elm Street or something, uh, you know, back in 80, 98 or 99. Yeah. So. so I know uh, one of the things you were you were looking for with the new lineup was a sense of camaraderie and, you know, more of a band, a functional band that rehearses and plays out more after the long absence. Do you feel like you found that with the, with the new lineup? Yes, yes. Uh, but you know, it's it's uh, also you know when 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 uh, two third uh, of the uh, you know the band have uh, you know bunch of kids and family matters and all that. It's, it's you know it's difficult to have the continuance. You know, at least it was in our case. You know, it's, you know, it was unfortunate, but you know, gotta have you know the carry on call. But, so. Here I am, Do, so, doing the only thing I'm qualified for, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. how, how did the rest of the lineup in, in your current band come together? Uh, Kevin, uh, he, he, he left, uh, you know, and that was, I was devastated about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, King, he has all these contacts, and, and we were very fortunate to to get this guy from Sacramento, Gabe, Creature Gabe, as we call him now. Uh, so, you know, just an amazing talent, you know, young and hungry. What more can you ask for? So late last year, you re reunited with your old band, Old Funeral, for a mini festival that was hosted by Black Metal. Was that just a one-off, or are there any plans to further resurrect Old Funeral? No. I said to the guys, this is definitely going to be the last Old Funeral show. If we're going to do it again, it has to be New Funeral. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I will see. No, no. Never say never, isn't that what they say? And you have a Motorhead tribute band back in Norway with Tor from Old Funeral called Bombers. Yeah. I know you've always been a huge fan, supporter of Motorhead. Tell me about the first time uh, you and Lem Lemmy met in person. What was that like? Oh, that was amazing. That was fucking, that was a, uh, 
Me and Demonos, you know, we had, we, we, with a girlfriend, we had just been at um, to, to see Motorhead uh, the night before at, at uh, Roskilde Festival in, in, in Denmark in '93. And uh, when they finished, uh, we, yeah, we just decided we want to go home as well. So we uh, came to the airport in Copenhagen, and uh, yeah, it was like four hours, four or five hours till our flight. And, like, and there was Lemmy standing outside the bar, even having a hamburger. And uh, Oscar could take a picture of you. and. And uh, asked him, uh, what are you doing? Oh, no, my flight is in uh, two hours to LAX, so and so forth. And uh, he invited us on into the bar. And we sat there, and we had no money. And he, he bought us uh, these uh, Jackson Cokes, two hours. We, when we, then he had to go in. Uh, actually, when he also had uh, raw mix on a, on a Walkman of uh, the Boston album. So you know, we got to hear that, and uh, yeah, he was just, just we were like oh, blown away, you know, the way he treated us. We were like coming there, nobodies, and he, you know, we, we felt like fucking rock stars sitting there, you know. Even, even some people came over to us, uh, some kids, and asked us for autographs, and we were like, <laughs> you know, that was great, great moment in time. Uh, Did we, you mean uh, we were so drunk uh, after when we left uh, that uh, we barely came with the flight, you know. <laughs> he drank us under the table. You think he ever got wind of what and he you paid were doing? for every drink? Do you think he ever got wind of what you were doing musically? Hmm? Do you think he ever got wind of what you were doing musically? Got wind. Sorry. W was he aware of, of your band Immortal? No. Oh. So, uh, what do you think about American beer? Do you love it? Hate it? Uh, there's so, so much of it. I, uh, I tried this uh, beer here the other day, but I think it's Belgium or something. But but I haven't tried it. I haven't uh, tasted it anywhere else. It's a beer called. But I think I did produce it here. But that said something about Belgium. What the fuck is the name of it? Flat tire. Yeah. Yeah, that was fucking good. You like that? Yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, Jester King Brewery? No. So Jester King Brewery here in town. This is right out of Austin, Texas. They have what's called a black metal imperial style. Oh, look at that. With this guy on it. Looks kind of like you. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. That's good. Give that a try. <laughs> okay. Also, uh, we did a tour with Behemoth in Europe a month ago. Uh, and uh, they also uh, produced beer. It was very good. Yeah. Very cool. Can I try that? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. That's from Jester King Brewery to you. Oh, come on! Oh, that was that was embarrassing. <laughs> Cheers. Oh. Fuck it out, boy. Was this red wine? <laughs> <laughs> that was strong. So the last time I, I saw uh, you in concert was back in 2002. You were touring alongside Manowar on their Warriors of the World tour. Any any memories from that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I remember singing a duet backstage, singing the Bridge of Death with Eric Adams. That was special. Wow. Yeah, cool guy. How did you uh, originally get into heavy metal music? I know you started really young, playing in bands. Yeah, I, st I started in '88 uh, with a funeral uh, when I was 15. But uh, I started uh, five, five, six years old, uh, listening to rock and roll. You know, started with um, tape tapes I found at home from my parents. You know, with. Uh, Actually, the first song I can remember, the first song, rock and roll song I ever heard was uh, uh, I found my thrill, do, 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 on Blueberry Hill. Yeah. And Elvis and you know, Jerry Lewis and all that, yeah. And then I, then I discovered Kiss. And uh, yeah, we go from there. What's next after this current US tour? Uh, we're going to Russia on the 30th. I think, of April. Uh, we have two shows there, Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg. So, looking forward to that too.
Very cool. Yeah, I've been playing there for years. You know, last time we played there with Immortal, it was awesome. Great audience. Yeah. Good turnouts, the shows over there for black metal? Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to talk metal today, Abbott. Any last words for your fans watching at home before we wrap this up? Come to the show. Die hard. <laughs>